Hello, and Happy New Year. I'm excited to be back and bringing a whole collection of new video topics to you, but I know that not everyone is fully back in academic Let's Learn Medicine mode yet, so instead of jumping into classic med ed territory, I thought I would start the year off with something a little more fun. 10 predictions for how medicine will evolve over the next 100 years. One huge caveat. This will be based on no data whatsoever other than my own opinion and imagination. What I'm going to do is to look at some very general trends in medicine and healthcare from recent decades and extrapolate what those trends might look like if they continue on course for another century. Obviously, the further into the future the prediction, the less accurate you should expect it to be. As I go through this, I want to keep in mind something called Amara's Law, which states that people tend to overestimate the short-term impact of new technology and underestimate the long-term impact. For example, medicine of today, it looks really darn similar to medicine from 2013, but absolutely nothing like medicine of 1923. If some of my predictions seem pessimistic for the next decade or two, that's why. So let's get started, and please keep in mind, this is just for fun and not meant to be taken too seriously. I'm not going to beat around the bush, but instead start with something very timely, artificial intelligence. There's been an explosion of public interest in AI over the last month since the chatbot ChatGPT was released to the public. I have a lot of concerns about how AI will shape our society in general in the coming decades, most of which falls outside of this discussion of healthcare. But healthcare itself may be the area that has the most favorable benefit to risk ratio from this technology. Within 10 years, I believe the offspring of chatbots like ChatGPT will be writing layperson-friendly discharge instructions for us. Over the next 10 to 20 years, decision support tools will become increasingly embedded into electronic medical record systems. What, how do I imagine that might look? Well, suppose I'm seeing a patient and I think that they have community-acquired pneumonia. Uh, I go to place some hospital admission orders, including one for some antibiotic X. What could happen is a friendly reminder uh, immediately pops up that says something like, when patients of similar age and medical history as this patient are admitted to your hospital, 82% of your colleagues order antibiotic Y instead of antibiotic X, which is supported by the following three papers from the medical literature. There is no technical reason we don't have this now. I think it's more that we are collectively apprehensive of outsourcing our decision-making to a computer even if the algorithms are just making recommendations and not actual decisions. But within 20 years, the advantages of this in terms of both better patient outcomes and offloading of cognitive tasks will be so apparent that resistance will all but disappear, much like resistance to electronic medical records in general has disappeared over the last 20 years. Looking beyond this, looking beyond 20 years, starts to get a little sketchier because the field seems to be advancing increasingly more quickly. But I suspect by 25 years out, AI will be listening in on our patient interviews and writing a draft of the medical note for us. By 40 years out, AI will have replaced many radiologists and after that many pathologists. Even eventually most autopsies will be conducted by autonomous AI-driven surgical robots. Now, before I get uh, you know a ton of nasty emails, I am not saying radiologists and pathologists will become totally obsolete. They'll still need to double check the conclusions of the computers, just like cardiologists currently double check the automatic reads from ECG machines. And they will still need to investigate the more complex of cases um, and somehow you know, be involved in programming these AI and these algorithms. But overall, we'll just need much fewer of them. The same phenomenon will happen to all fields, but as radiologists and pathologists are the least patient-facing, the resistance from the public will be the least, and thus it will impact them first. Speaking of which, though, by 100 years from now, uh, I expect the process of medical diagnosis will be mostly automated. From their home, a patient will be interviewed by a chatbot, one which, which will almost certainly have a photorealistic video avatar, 
And that chatbot will literally be the one making the diagnosis and even explaining it to the patient. Wearables could provide enough exam data that physically coming into the clinic or ER will be less frequently necessary than it currently is. As with radiology and path, there will absolutely still need a, uh, still be a need for live human healthcare professionals. There will still be a need for physical exams and procedures and a need for sensitive family meetings and end-of-life discussions that a bot simply will not be able to replicate. But many tasks, particularly cognitive tasks, will be outsourced to AI. Next, something straightforward, diabetes. Last January was the 100 year anniversary of the first use of insulin in a person, a 14 year old boy with type one diabetes. Prior to this, a diagnosis of diabetes, particularly type one, was a death sentence. Over the subsequent century, we've gone from that to long acting insulin, handheld glucometers, monitoring, monitoring the disease with hemoglobin A1C test, the development of a dozen different classes of oral hypoglycemics, and most recently, continuous glucose monitors and insulin pumps. Over the next 10 to 20 years, I expect that insulin pumps and continuous monitors will become more commonplace in both the industrialized world and eventually in the rest of the planet. Complications from diabetes like kidney failure, foot infections, retinopathy, and neuropathy will all become rarer. And by 75 years, I think diabetes will be routinely curable by an artificial endocrine pancreas. Sure, we have things now that are colloquially referred to as an artificial pancreas, but I mean a true artificial autonomous organ, one that is purely internal and which manufactures its own insulin from circulating chemical precursors. Will it be easy to do this? No, not remotely, but this seems like a surmountable barrier that I hope to see overcome within my lifetime. Cancer. For the last decade, cancer therapy has been a field experiencing a revolution, driven by genomics and immunotherapy. I think this will progressively continue to get better and better, with improved treatments, improved diagnostics, and improved general approaches to cancer screening. By 40 years, screening tests for most, most cancers will not only exist, but also be shown to, be significantly, uh, to significantly improve overall mortality, not just cancer-specific mortality. Now, this is not the same thing as saying we'll have a cure for cancer because cancer is actually hundreds of different diseases, but survival from cancer will look far better than it currently does. And it already looks better than it did 10 or 20 years ago. Upcoming improvements in oncologic care, in fact, is looking so promising right now that it's hard to even imagine what it will look like in a century. Moving to something which might be seen as potentially controversial, I anticipate that how we partition specialties within medicine is going to fundamentally change. There are three relevant trends that I want to discuss. First, the notion of the proceduralist, a medical professional who currently may or may not be a physician, whose role is primarily to perform procedures rather than make diagnoses, counsel patients, or prescribe treatments. The most concrete example are pick nurses. Imagining that trend continuing, Within 30 years, I think most bedside inpatient procedures will be performed by a non-physician proceduralist. Instead of having a physician be the one to perform a lumbar puncture or a thoracentesis, when they might only do 5 or 10 a year, why not have it done by a physician assistant who does 100 a year because that's one of the primary responsibilities of their position? A second relevant trend concerns surgeons and the fact that there are an increasing number of minimally invasive procedures performed by medical specialists, for example, uh, TAVRs being performed by cardiology or double balloon enteroscopies performed by GI. Combining this trend with the preceding one on the rise of procedural lists and the fact that I believe ro uh, robot-assisted surgeries will allow many procedures to be performed uh, more quickly, within, I don't know, 60 years, I think that surgeons will have become far fewer in number. The third trend within this domain concerns the increasing understanding of neuroscience and the biological basis of psychiatry. Over the last century, there have been a number of diseases initially believed psychiatric in, uh, in origin, but are now reclassified as neurologic after the biologic mechanisms behind them became much better understood. Within 100 years, neurology and psychiatry will be merged into one field as they once were. 
Let's talk about longevity. In 1923, the U.S. life expectancy at birth was 58, and for the world as a whole, a frighteningly low 38. In 2019, just prior to COVID, the U.S. was at 79 and the world was at 73. While one might assume a continuation of that 100-year trend would mean the average expectancy in the U.S. to hit 100 by 2123, most of the gains in the last century was from 1920 to 1960, with significantly slower improvements since then. Simply eyeballing the trend, it looks like the U.S. is asymptotically heading for a life expectancy around 88, with the world around 82. Part of the reason for this leveling off is the diminishing returns from public health. It's hard for people of our generation and, and younger generations to understand the profound impact of sanitation, improved nutrition, and childhood vaccinations, but they did far more to improve life, life expectancy than all the medications since have done. Of course, these extremely crude and evidence-free estimates of mine are assuming that we don't have a major worldwide armed conflict, a pandemic of super covid climatic catastrophe, or a civilization-ending encounter with an asteroid, which could throw the estimates completely off. Before we move from longevity completely, there is one aspect that I don't expect to change. The maximum lifespan. Despite the fact that some futurists have declared that the first person to live to a thousand has already been born, the maximum human lifespan has been stuck in the range from 100 to 120 for all of recorded history. Maybe there will be some black swan event that radically changes our fate on this issue. Um, I, certainly, I certainly hope there, would be, there will be. I wouldn't mind living to 150 or beyond, provided, of course, that it was a reasonable quality of life. But I really don't expect that to happen. Next is nutrition. Over the last century, we've moved from eating mostly whole foods, but understanding and caring little about nutrition itself, to being conned by big agriculture's for, group, uh, for food group paradigm and getting hooked on a diet heavy in corn, wheat, sugar, salt, and dairy, to gradually getting some real research and transitioning over to the food pyramid, and then getting some more research and realizing that maybe the food pyramid isn't all that great either. There is still a ton that we don't know about optimal nutrition, and there is still a ton of work to do on making healthy food affordable and available to everyone but I think we've been making recent progress. You know, maybe, especially if you're, if you're a nutrition uh, fan, you know, maybe it feels like a glacial pace, but I do think it's been one in the right direction. My prediction is that within 50 years, what we conventionally think of today as junk food will largely no longer be a thing. That doesn't mean that unhealthy food or fast food or vending machines, they won't exist, but I think unhealthy food will be an occasional indulgence rather than common staples. The fast food industry will be gradually, transi will, um, gradually transition to using less processed ingredients, and vending machines will move from, uh, from stocking mostly chips, candy, and soda to better alternatives. Plus, I think across the board, we will be consuming less beef and poultry in favor of sustainable seafood and plant-based meats. So-called factory farms, in which animals are kept in horrific conditions, will be gone in their entirety, will be gone completely, and in general, sustainability will become a central focus in food choice. One aspect of the future of medicine that feels particularly challenging to predict is about wearables and the idea of quantified health. I've heard tech bros and biohackers talk about the near future in which they not only imagine the majority of people wearing devices to continuously measure not just your heart rate, but your serum glucose, your sleep, your activity level, and then also having that data sent to one's doctor in real time to aid the doctor in identifying problems the moment it is theoretically identifiable and then proactively reaching out to the patient to make a recommendation or medication adjustment before the patient themselves even realizes there's a problem. I've even heard people talk about smart toilets that will analyze your urine and feces for abnormalities in your biochemistry, which could even give you feedback and make recommendations via AI without needing to include your doctor at all. I'm a little skeptical about this though, because these same tech bros are some of the same people who talk longingly about routine screening full body CT scans and having routine and frequent pan labs, 
like getting all of your hormone levels and all of your inflammatory markers checked every six, uh, every six months. And we know that these types of approaches to care are not only wasteful and not cost-effective, they aren't even helpful irrespective of cost. More data is not always better. Is it possible that big data and AI could combine to become better at seeing signal in the noise and successfully identifying problems in all this physiologic data that we currently uh, aren't able to identify? I don't know, maybe, but I, I, I just, I don't see that. I don't see that in the, in the, certainly not in the near future. But the one relevant trend that I definitely do see happening and is already happening is more people using wearables to track their physiology, irrespective of whether or not medicine finds a useful way to apply the collected data. Will smart toilets be a thing in 2123? I, I honestly think they may be, at least for the, the wealthiest. I will not be installing one in my house, though. A pessimistic prediction. We are going to continue to experience new emerging infectious diseases, including pandemics. COVID has obviously dominated discussion of infectious diseases recently, but it's hardly the first disease to spread around the world and kill millions. In the last century, there have been three major flu pandemics, a typhus epidemic in Russia that killed over a million people, and at least 40 million dead from the HIV pandemic, plus Ebola, MERS, SARS, Zika, and most recently monkeypox or mpox if you, if you prefer. If anything, improvements in technology over the last century has made the emergence of such diseases more likely, not less, as we encroach on the habitats of the animal reservoirs for these diseases and as worldwide travel has become easier. That's not even considering the risk from bioterrorism. COVID will not be the last pandemic our planet faces, and I think it's relatively likely that the next 100 years will bring something even worse that we will still be inadequately prepared to handle, despite all the lessons that we should have learned from the last three years. How will medical education, particularly U.S. medical schools, since that's where I have the most experience, change? Medical education has historically been pretty slow to change. We've been slow to update pedagogy, slow to incorporate new discoveries into our curricula, and slow to incorporate changing societal emphasis on different aspects of health. But change does happen. I predict that over the next 10 years, more schools will abandon standardized testing for their applications. By 15 years, they will have realized that removing standardized testing was a well-intentioned error, yet in classic form, it will still take another 10 years to reverse it. By 2035, all but the most traditional schools will have trimmed out unnecessary large group lectures in favor of small group discussion and remote learning opportunities. Schools will de-emphasize the classic subjects of anatomy, histology, and biochem, and instead increase emphasis on immunology, communication, public health, and nutrition. The role of simulation will continue to grow. There will be some more focus on disparities in healthcare delivery and the impact of climate change. Although we should already be doing this now, I think it will take a good 20 years until the use of handheld ultrasound overtakes the stethoscope as the cornerstone of physical exam training. And at some point, we will realize that our current four-year undergrad degree requirement with a set of mandatory pre-med courses like organic chemistry is not necessary enough to justify keeping them. I suspect that here in the U.S. we'll eventually have a system similar to other parts of the world where people go straight from high school into a six-year medical program that will replace our current 4 plus 4 model. And by 100 years out from now, depending on how much AI influences the expected knowledge and skill set of physicians, the content of medical school, particularly clinical skills, uh, skills like interviewing and clinical reasoning, it could look vastly different. I love diagnostic reasoning. I think it's incredibly fascinating and underappreciated as a distinct subject in science of its own. But at the same time, if AI in 2123 is interviewing patients and making the vast majority of diagnoses, it doesn't seem logical for future doctors to be spending a huge amount of time learning those skills. Now, some humans will still need to study and perfect this in order to make the uh, rarer and more esoteric diagnoses, to understand and study new diseases, and to tweak the diagnostic algorithms as new knowledge emerges. 
But teaching every medical student to create a differential diagnosis in 2123 might make as little sense as teaching them all today how to perform their own gram stains and blood smears. If I'm still alive, this change will make me sad because I love talking about diagnostic reasoning as anyone who's followed this channel for a long time knows. But I understand at some point, this will come. And for my final prediction, it's not so much as following a, uh, following a trend to its natural 100 year extension, as much as it is just a blind hope, but I predict that at some point during the 21st century, the United States will finally adopt a system of universal health care. I don't know whether it will be Medicare for all, or if it will more closely resemble the UK's National Health Service, or some private public hybrid that's done in other countries, but the idea that an unexpected heart attack or a no-fault car accident could lead to personal bankruptcy will become a thing of the past. Some relic of capitalism and hyperpartisanship that will feel unbelievable to future generations. That's going to require a lot of work in Washington, D.C., and I am not able to imagine or guess specifically how it could happen. But given how dramatically American politics have shifted in just the last decade, anything seems possible over a 100-year time frame. So, those are my 10 100-year predictions for the future of medicine. Feel free to return in 2123 and point out all the things I got wrong. <laughs> or <clears throat> if you don't think you can wait until then, feel free to drop a comment below instead. For my next video, I'll be doing a deep dive into AI and diagnostic reasoning to answer the question, could a chatbot pass my final exam? I'm very excited about it. Uh, and so please be on the lookout for that in the upcoming days. And I'll be back with more conventional med ed content after that.